All right, my name is Joel Amos uh, from themoviemensch.com. Uh, Ivy, thank you very much for visiting with me. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate oh my gosh, that movie just got me right here. Um, oh, good. <laughs> oh, so much so. Um, what was the origins of this story, uh, uh, kind of putting this story together? I, I was actually speaking earlier and I, and I said I kept having to check my phone because I swore this was a true story. I just swore it. But uh, it is the most extraordinary, you know, uh, fictional one. But well, how did it kind of get going for you? Well, thank you so much. And, um, you know, we had my my parents and I, we wrote this project together mm -hmm. and we had just kind of come off of doing a horror film and we wanted to do something very different. And so my my dad was a wrestler in uh, high school and he, and we wanted to do a movie that could, you know, be something families could watch that was really hopeful and uplifting, very different from our previous film. Um, so we just kind of put our heads together and started, you know, working out through some ideas and and landed on doing a on a sports drama, which, you know, I didn't, I don't think I expected that to happen, but but it it was a really fun, fun thing to do with them. Well, it's interesting you mentioned that because I've I've always thought that two genres of films, particularly horror and sports movies are perfect metaphors for putting a mirror up to society or to kind of comment about ourselves. So it's interesting that you mentioned that you kind of came off a horror movie and then you wound up doing a sports movie. Um, is that kind of a freeing storytelling nature to kind of have a vehicle where it draws in the audience, but then you're actually talking about something much deeper? I think so. I mean, in this movie, absolutely. Wrestling, it's it's really interesting because it's sort of a, a metaphor for life. You're grappling. It's a very intense sport, um, and every character in this project is is grappling with something. Um, you know, whether it's John dealing with his demons, or you know, all of the other Michael um, with his family life, and and every other character, they all have something that they're that they're that they're grappling with. And so we felt like this would be actually a really nice backdrop for that. Plus you hardly ever see wrestling on film. So we wanted to kind of do that as well. Yeah, and I, and I thought it was fascinating too, because as, as you keep introducing new characters, I mean, the ensemble kept getting bigger. And I know as a writer, that can be a real challenge because you want everybody to be three-dimensional. And I always remember a screenplay professor once telling me that every character you should write should have their own movie. I mean, they should be that rich. Um, as you started adding characters, it, it, it really enriched this world, but did you kind of feel like that that was a challenge to kind of have a, a, a nice small town, but everybody be, you know, three-dimensional and, and believable? It was, it was a challenge. We, we just focused on making sure that we were doing it in a way that was organized. We were thinking about you know, which roles needed to be fulfilled in for this story, um, for this main character storyline, um, and who kind of was essential. And so you just sort of like build out from there. And, you know, you, you base certain characters on, you know, traits of people that you know, or um, if you have someone in mind, like there were a few people that we kind of had in mind that maybe we wanted to have in the project. So we wrote something that kind of we thought would work for them. And, and that could really kind of be an, an, a nice vehicle for them. But um, everybody in our cast, um, you know, Cole aside, our supporting cast just brought it, brought their A game. Um, they made it so, you know, just they brought those characters to life. Yeah, the, um, the small town feel that, that's, that's untouchable, unspeakable between citizens. You, you just really captured it so brilliantly. Thank you so um, much. And the town itself is a character too. Right. Yeah. Well, it is. And it, it speaks volumes that, that Cole's character has resisted going back there because yes. the town is so rich. The people are so ingrained in that right. community. Um, right. Speaking yeah, he, of, yeah. of Cole, he, he just, I mean, he always blows me away, but he just blew me away in this. And of course you, you write this role. You may or may not have had people in mind for it, but whatever, he accepts the role, he brings it to life. And then when you were watching him work and then seeing him in the final product, how did that make you feel about this character you created that he brought to life? It's hard, it's, it's hard to even articulate because we had this idea of, of John Wright when we were writing him. And then when we had this meeting um, with Cole and we saw what he would be able to do with it, we just were like, oh, that's, that's you, you're that, you're that part. And then just being on set, watching him work, he's so gifted and he just, 
it's so natural for him. All you have to do, it was, it wasn't even that much work, you know, editing because it was like, he just, every take was fantastic. And it was just really such a delight. And he's such a wonderful person in, in, in life that it's been a really great friendship and partnership with him. And, um, Writing, uh, they say traditionally, is a solitary endeavor, but uh, in your case, uh, it, it is not. And uh, what's it like writing with with partners, uh, your family, um, and and kind of having somebody to to have feedback with and collaborate? I mean, it's I think that would be rather nice. It's nice most of the time. It's yeah. sometimes not so nice when we are just totally butting heads and have like we just want our vision to be, you know, for a particular scene or whatever, you know, fighting, but um, we, we are usually really on the same page. So our workflow is pretty easy. Um, and it's, it's fun because you really can't bounce ideas back and forth between, you know, one another and, and every, like you say one thing and they add to that and you go, Oh, that's great. That's great. And you just kind of keep going. Um, but it took a while. I was in college at the time, so I would have to come up on weekends and, and we would sort of like reserve time to, to write. And, um, and so it's just like a really, it's a lovely thing to be able to do and we get along really well for the most part. Yeah, yeah, it shows. Well, I, I noticed that uh, the morning takes place in Eastern Washington. And, yes. Uh, the last champion takes place in the inland Northwest as well. Yeah. Um, what is it uh, that, that you find yourself setting your, your stories uh, here? I'm actually here right now. I'm in Spokane. Oh, cool. Okay. Well, I love Spokane. We actually, we have a lot of friends from that area. And so we had visited them a lot and the neighborhood is so beautiful. There's so much there. And so um, the mooring, it just, it made sense. We got, we were able to get locations. And with The Last Champion, it takes place in the town of Garfield which is literally a town and we have friends who are from there. And so um, when we went up there, we knew we were gonna be writing this project, but we just ended up kind of taking a bunch of photographs. And really when we wrote it um, and typed out scenery, we based it off of that place. And um, everybody in the town was incredibly welcoming. We basically took it over and they were, they could not not have been lovelier. They were, they were fantastic. Well, that's something I've noticed. I've only been here for a few years. I'm an LA transplant. And um, I, one thing I noticed about the people is, that, again, coming back to that ensemble, you just really uh, captured it, really rich. I mean, as, as the yeses started coming in and these characters started becoming real and coming to life, um, did the kind of anticipation, the eagerness, the excitement of getting to work on this kind of just exponentially uh, run through you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're dealing with... Diff, like different types of stress because you're having to coordinate everything and, and make sure you know everything's happening when and how it should be happening but once we got up there um you know we really became a community because we were pretty isolated and it was you know with the weather and everything it was so cold and it was there were blizzards and whiteouts so we just all kind of like huddled in this little village together and um we had a we had a blast it was challenging beyond belief with with the weather especially um but it's it's really exciting when you kind of take a bird's eye perspective and like look at what you're doing you know it's hard because you're so involved and so intense but it's truly a blessing yeah well it, it shows and uh i was really just taken also with the direction and and i know you're you're maybe a little biased because you you kind of know the director a, a wee bit. Just a little um, bit. Um, what 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 do you like most uh, about what he does uh, with as a storyteller and, and bringing what you guys do verbally to life visually? He's so he's so good at storytelling, and he has a background in photography, so he was able to visualize this movie really well from the beginning. And he works really well with actors, and he just he has his vision and um he didn't let it go for one second even when you know basically things seemed impossible he just kept at it and that is why we have a film and the whole time I mean, it's just all the obstacles it's just truly his um tenacity and endurance has been i mean really inspiring 
I think to everybody, especially to me as his daughter, to watch that and, and see him be able to do that. Oh, as the father to a daughter, that, that just warms the cockles right there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what, um, who or what uh, would you say are your cinematic influences? Like what movies or artists or directors just, you know, really hit you and it kind of in, in hindsight, you could say, you know what, that, that person had a lot to do with why I'm here. Oh gosh. Um, well, on a, I have so many different filmmakers that I appreciate and love and respect their work. Um, but I mean, watching my parents as I grew up, just be in this business and also um, my grandfather was a television writer and producer. And so um, I've kind of been interested in sort of following his, his path as well. Um, it's a, definitely a family affair. Um, it's like kind of third generation, I guess. Um, wow. yeah. But uh, as far as people I don't personally know, um, one of my favorite directors really is Kubrick. I am just, I think he's basically A plus. Yeah. Yeah, he is. I just actually, I think a couple of weeks ago now, I got the uh, Steelbook Blu-ray upgrade of Full Metal Jacket. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, I, and I think I might have jumped a little bit when I got the mail that day. Uh, just a wee bit excited. He's um, amazing. Yeah. Uh, what's what kind of next on the agenda for, for you all? Are you just kind of basking in this or are things percolating? No, we're, we're working on stuff. I'm working on projects that I've um, been writing. Um, and then we have a uh, project that we think we're going to be doing next, which is filming in New Orleans. And then we have another one that uh, we want to get going that's working, that's um, takes place in, in, it's a period piece that takes place in Canada and England. So. Oh, nice. Yeah. Wow. Well, this has just been another delight, Ivy. Thank you so Thank you. very much for your time. I'm honored to be here. Thank you. Congratulations on everything and I uh, look forward to talking to you again in the future. Thank you, Sam. We really appreciate it. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. You too. Bye.